Hi everyone, this is Steve Barton. Uh, today we want to show you a special project we've been working on now for close to two years. Uh, it's a project that we have a patent on. We uh, received uh, a letter from our attorney saying that uh, the patent office has given it a patent number. He says we can reveal the product now and, and start gearing up to uh, making more of these units and get ready to sell them. Uh, we got a little work to go yet. We got a manual we got to make for it. Uh, we got to get warranty and end user agreement and some of that other stuff. We have one unit completely done. It's made out of stainless steel. Uh, its primary use uh, will be for positioning your work in a wire burner, a wire EDM unit. Uh, you can use it in any uh, other application where you need to position your work accurately in three dimensions. And so here's the unit that we have. Uh, and this is a multi-axis uh, adjusting tool, I guess is the name we got so far. And uh, uh, basically there's a number of components that are in here. It's all precision ground. It's made out of 40 uh, or 440 C stainless steel. Uh, it's hardened on some parts at 5052 Rockwell. Uh, other parts uh, it's 58 and 60 all depending on where you want the strength or where you want the wear. And uh, uh, you have the clamping part of it and a little bit. Uh, we'll set this up and show how to take a work part, clamp it in there with two clamps uh, and, and uh, get this position. Uh, this is one of the clamps for this side. Uh, I, I kept it out uh, because I wanted to show that we got other clamps. Uh, you have a clamp that can be used like this uh, and you can get a certain height you can turn the clamp upside down and you can get a more height. Uh, you have another clamp. Again, you have you use it both ways and this one's a little bit taller so you can get taller work. The nice thing about this unit is uh, this piece that does the clamp, the clamp head, you get two screws that hold that in and if we remove those two screws I can turn this at 90 degrees and so and then I have my clamps going in this way uh, as well as uh, we designed this and made it so that you can uh, and we haven't made it yet but uh, well, we're going to be making it so that you can clamp a v-block in there uh, numerous different things uh, we'll make it so that you have a clamping system that comes down at a 45 degree angle uh, uh, 30, 60, uh, a lot of times you got work you want to hold at those specific angles. Uh, we'll uh, make a lot of different attachments that can go to the head. Right now we got this unit uh, that uh, you can bolt right down to the table. Some companies they like to uh, position uh, their work holding unit up on the rails of the wire EDM, bolt it down so it's nice and stationary and they'll leave it in there and adjust their work. Some companies, uh, they like to have multiple units. They have one in the uh, burner, and then they have one out on a granite table with some setup tool lining up their next job. In this unit, you'll be able to use both ways. If you're going to use it uh, primarily where it stays on your rails most of the time, I would bolt it. Uh, you can loosen these two screws, pull this apart, uh, bolt that down, indicate it in, pop this back on, and away to go. And we haven't made the units... Uh, that if you want to pull this in and out every job, uh, you'll be able to use these slots in the side over here uh, in order to clamp down. So we got the base unit done. There's a lot of uh, accessory parts that we still have to make uh, and think about. Uh, but the unit works really nice. Uh, what it will do is allow you to line your work up because this will pivot this direction. It will pivot in that direction and it will pivot in that direction so it will allow you to line your work up in three axes so I'm gonna uh, throw this up in the vise right now and uh, we do not have a wire EDM I, I would show you how it's working the wire EDM but we don't have one so I'm just gonna clamp this right now in the vise bit so I can get to the screw. And what we'll do, uh, pop this other jaw in. Use flathead screws. 
Uh, this is made out of stainless steel. I do not have stainless steel fasteners yet, but uh, when we get the stainless steel fasteners, uh, everything on here will be stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about it rusting. Here's just one of my square setup blocks, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll just set this in here, clamp down on it, and kind of mimic how uh, you would do this in a wire EDM situation. You just stick your part in there, uh, you tighten these down. You don't want to reef them real hard, but you want to get them tight enough that your part doesn't move. Uh, this unit is nice and solid. And uh, what you do is now we want to plane it. This surface right here, we want to plane this way and we want to plane that way. And we get different adjustments that we'll use to do that way. And you can see we're, we're low right here, we're high here, we come out where we're low, to adjust this axis in, you got one screw over here, and you can see by moving it, I can adjust that in. And you can see right now uh, we're sitting real close and your pivot point is back here so you have to uh, wind rather than going half of your number because you're indicating out here your pivot point here you actually got to overshoot it when you get used to this you're going to see how much you're out and you're going to know how much to uh, crank on that and get pretty good at it so we got one axis right now lined up now we got to line up this axis. You see we're low over here. And we're high over here. So I'll come to the low side on this side. This one it won't really matter a whole lot where you start uh, one side or not. But if you're in the other axis I like to start in the front and, and go that way. So what we have over here, we have two screws. There's a, a puck inside here and it's got uh, two uh, pins. Uh, it's hard to explain exactly what's going on, but there's two pins that's inside this puck with the 1032 uh, screws. And if I tighten one and loosen the other, I can actually uh, make that puck move on the inside and it will adjust this. So you can see that I'm getting the movement. Uh, just by tightening the screws. Now, I didn't have it tight to begin with, but this is a case where you loosen the one, tighten the other, and in this case, because I'm pivoting right on the center, uh, it's going to be one of those things where you would, uh, if I was out two thousandths from going to one side to the other, uh, you just want to go a half of what you, uh, of, of what what you needed there. And again, this is something that. Uh, you, you don't want to reef real tight. You just want it tight enough that it's not going to move. And it take a little bit of getting used to. Once you get used to it, you'll be able to indicate that in real nice and fast. And then what you want to do is you want to go through and you just want to snug both of those up uh, so that uh, there's no resistance. So you can see we're setting real good through in that axis. You can come back now and see if we 
back and forth here and we can see that we're still good that way. We'll move the tip down. And now what we're going to do, we're going to sweep across the face of the part. In this one, we're going to line it up in this direction. And you can see we're a fair amount out. We're low here. And we adjust that with this screw over here. And actually what you want to do is just have these screws right here snug. These are what's actually going to like uh, tighten it. I had them actually kind of tight. Uh, I noticed I had some resistance on the screw, so I'm just going to loosen them up a little bit. So that they're just snug. And we're high at this point. A little bit high there. And now that looks pretty good. When you have that done, you can tighten these down. And what that will do is tighten this top plate to this, and so you will no longer be able to pivot back and forth. So now we got our part lined up in all three axes. Uh, this little unit, uh, you can see it didn't take that much time to line that up uh, with me just uh, demonstrating it. And if you're working on uh, uh, this kind of tooling, you get used to it. Uh, you, you'll spend an average probably between five and ten minutes lining up your parts, maybe even faster if you get really good at it. But this unit would uh, be a unit that uh, primar primarily be used in wire EDM, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean it always has to be that way. You can use it in any machine that you want three axes of adjustment in. Uh, this is designed so that you got just two uh, Allen wrenches. Uh, you have the 5 16 screws. That you have right here for tightening the one axis and you have the 1032's that you have uh, this uh, 532nd wrench will work the clamps as well as the adjustment. I don't have a screw set in here uh, right now but this is designed too that once you get this axis in there will be a lock screw over here where you can lock it into position this locks into position because you put a tightness between both screws again it's a push and pull system and by having both screws tight, it will automatically uh, lock. The screw here will lock, and then the locked axes in here, uh, these two screws right here where you have your pivot point. So we have a pivot that works this way, pivot that works that way, and then we have a pivot that works that way. And so this is our first device that we patent it. We don't know how well it's going to do. I've done a, a lot of wire burning in the past. I know most of the tooling that uh, you use out there, uh, I, I really don't care for. This is one reason I designed this. Uh, and I know this uh, will work really slick. It will speed up the operations. And uh, I think uh, people that are in the business will really appreciate something like this. Uh, the nice thing, again, uh, I'll just demonstrate here. Uh, if, if if I'm holding a long block and I want to burn it another way, I've got to get another wrench here a minute. Because these are quarter twenties in here. You can take this unit off. And you can mount it yeah, let me get the yeah, it looks like uh Oh, using the wrong screws. I wonder why it wasn't going in there. Okay. 
and I forgot that I done this different. You can see I got uh, I got some flathead screws. Now I don't have any flat uh, flathead screws with me right now, but this will give you the idea. Uh, you put your flathead screws in. You can bolt that up on there, and now this unit. Uh, you'll be able to put your clamps in this way and now you'll be able to hold taller parts that are thinner uh, so when we make a v-block that goes on the end we'll make the same thing so that you can turn it uh, both directions 90 degrees uh, it will uh, be a very handy type tool to have so a lot of times you can just leave this in the machine you can bolt whatever head of the various types of head we'll end up making custom heads for customers and whatever now this is our first uh, patented device. Uh, you know, we hear different stories. We may be wasting our money and our time. I don't know uh, uh, if the patent will really give us the protection that we want. We hope that we can start selling these units and uh, in the area right here. And then after uh, people use them, give us some feedback. If we have to make some minor modifications with them. Uh, we're, we're hoping to approach someone that would be interested that may already have a global market uh, that would be interested in this device, uh, buy the rights to it, and yeah, maybe we can work out some kind of deal there. And uh, 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 we know from our attorney that if we have something patented like that, it makes it worth a lot more. Uh, so we don't know what's going to happen. It's a roll of the dice. Uh, if you sit around and do nothing, uh, you're never going to know. Uh, so we, we produce this device, we put a lot of time in it. I had this thing about 90% complete two or three times and then I started thinking, hey, if I do this, this would be a lot better and then if I do that, uh, I'm going to have to change everything. So I went back to the drawing board about three or four different times with this already uh, finally to get to this point and uh, going through the patent process that takes a little bit of time as well. Uh, one of my co-workers uh, was asking, so what happens if it doesn't sell good and you put all that time and money? And I guess my comment to him was, well, if it doesn't sell and it goes bust, <clears throat> basically I lost a lot of my free time and Adam lost a lot of his money. <laughs> so but, uh, we'll never know until we stick our necks out and try it. We're hoping that it sells good. We're hoping that we can make money. Uh, we're hoping that we can uh, make enough on here that we'll get Solid Rock uh, a good head start. And that's what we wanted to do instead of being a job shop. We can always fall back on that. Uh, instead of being a job shop, we wanted to make uh, uh, little uh, devices like this that we can patent, probably market and sell. I got a number of other ideas, one of our other projects. Uh, I can't really say what it is, but anybody that runs a lathe, uh, they're going to want one of these in their toolbox. I just got to come up with a way to make it so it's economical for the average uh, person. Uh, but, uh, uh, that one's about 90% complete. I dropped that to pursue this and uh, so we'll, we're gonna see how this goes. We still got a lot of work, a lot of uh, accessories we still got to make and we're hoping by the first of the year to be able to sell these. Uh, if you're asking what kind of price, we don't even know any of that information right now. Uh, we just wanted to get it patented, get a working unit uh, and, and start from there. So there's still quite a bit of work but at least uh, we got this far and we can now reveal it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.